Blender 3.2 is here. And with that, we are getting caustics in Blender. And it's truly amazing. We'll create a drinking glass together and I will show you how to use caustics because they aren't enabled by default and you need a few things set up for it to work properly. So let's get started. Now let's get into it. All right, so I've opened up a base file, uh, which I've prepared to showcase how caustics work in Blender. I am in Blender 3.2. That's very important to note. This doesn't work in a different version. So download Blender 3.2 and you should be good to go. All right, so with the base file over here, I'm just gonna disable it. And we are going to start off by creating our glass. So I'm gonna hit Shift A and add in a cylinder. I'm gonna give it 64 vertices. I'm gonna hit numpad one to go into the front view of the camera, G and Z and hold control to snap to grid and I'm going to align it to the x-axis so it's nicely on the ground while we're at it I'm also going to scale up the object slightly so into edit mode with tab select the top face G and Z again and just pull it up extending our glass all right so what I want to do next and you might be thinking okay why so does he have these highlights mine looks like this well basically that's why because I have the cavity option enabled and I think it allows to see better uh, with complex objects how the shape is form. All right, so in edit mode, let's start selecting all of these edges. The easiest way to do this is to go into front view with number one into wireframe. So Z wireframe mode and just click and drag and select all of these edges and make sure you don't have any of these top edges selected. So with all of these edges selected, what I want to do now is I want to deselect every other edge. There's actually a very handy tool for that in Blender and it's over here in the select menu. So go over here and choose checker deselect. This will deselect every other edge and we should be getting exactly what we wanted. I'm going to go into top view here. I'm going to hit S and scale these guys inward. If I now go back down here, you will see that the edges also got shortened on the Z axis. And that's not something that I actually want. So instead, let's undo that. Go back into top view with numpad seven. Let's hit S again. And in this case, also hit shift Z to exclude the Z layer from the uh, skill effect. Now let's scale these guys in and voila, it happened exactly how I wanted it to. All right, so that's the basic shape for our glass all done. And I'm gonna add in a modifier next. So in this case, I'm gonna add in a bevel modifier, which I'm gonna set to 0.01 and give it about three segments. If I now tap out of edit mode, you will see we get a nice bevel. However, it is still shaded flat. So let's hit right click shade smooth and we should be good to go. Also while red and I'm going to go to the object data properties and enable the normals auto smooth option just to make sure we don't get any weird artifacting. Let's tap back into edit mode and let's go into face select which we can do with the keyboard number three. Now let's select our bottom face here and let's hit control B to bevel this guy as well. I'm going to go drag it up slightly like this and I'm going to scroll up to add in extra edges. Now it doesn't really matter how many you take just take a decent amount. Something like this will do just fine. If we now go back into front view, you will see we have a nice rounded off bottom for our drinking glass here. Let's take the top face, press I to inset it and just drag it in until you get a nice sort of edge, which will be the thickness for our glass. Now I'm going to hit E and pull this down. If you're unsure how far you pull it down, let's just go into wireframe mode so you can actually see how far you are. This is not very far just yet, so let's pull it down a little bit further. So G and Z again. Pull it down and leave it at something like this. So you get a nice thick bottom, which I like for a sturdy glass. Now let's hit control B here as well. I'm just going to round these off slightly, something like this. And the final step is that we actually need to change the edge up top, round it off slightly so it's nicer to drink from. And I'm going to go into edge select here, select the outer ring by holding alt and clicking. Now also pressing shift, I'm going to click on the inner ring and we should have both rings selected and just bevel these until they sort of meet in the middle. And voila, this is our drinking glass. All right, so with the drinking glass all done, let's start working on shading this thing. So let's go into shading here and let's go into render view. In case you're wondering, I have set the background color to a very, very light blue color, something like this. And I've set the strength to 0.1 just to get a nice overall bluish tint to our scene. All right, so with the glass selected, let's add in a new material. Let's call this guy glass and I'm going to delete the principal BSDF by pressing X. All right, so we don't have any shader input right now. So I'm going to go shift a search and look up a glass BSDF and plug that into the surface. Now I'm going to set the IOR to 1.5 and you might be wondering, OK, so why 1.5? Well, there's this very convenient website called Pixel and Poly. And there's this IOR list containing the IOR values for very many materials. In this case, I need glass. So I'm just going to press the G here and 
over here, you will see we have a regular glass value IOR of 1.5. Now I will put the link to this website in the description. So if you want to look up IOR values for your materials, feel free to do so over here. All right. So with the glass BSDF all done, what I want to do next is I want to change it a little bit. I want to vary it up, make it look a little bit nicer. Now, I think the overall glass shader is a bit too bright and a bit too see-through. So what I want to use in combination with it, but I'm just going to show you how that looks is a refraction BSDF. Now the refraction BSDF is um, something that captures the parts where light refracts and it will generate a lot of these dark edges like this. So I'm going to combine these two together and that's a node wrangler feature. So if you hold control shift and then right click and drag, release it and you will combine them in a mix shader. So now on one hand, we have the glass shader. On the other hand, we have the refraction shader. And if we set this to 0.5, we get a nice combination of the two. And I think we get best of both worlds. Now I'm going to set the refraction BSDF IOR to 1.5 as well. Now, next step, what I want to do is I want to create a nice fade going up the glass. So we need a color ramp for this. So let's just take it and plug it into the color for both the glass and the refraction BCF. So I'm going to hit control T. This will add in a texture corner node, a mapping node and a image texture node. We don't need an image texture node, of course. Now with the image texture selected, we can hit shift S, go into texture and choose gradient. Now this is a very convenient shortcut to know. Shift S will replace a node with your newly chosen one. All right, so we have the gradient texture here and I'm just gonna hit control shift and click on the color ramp just to preview the output of the color ramp. Now you will see it's not working as intended. So first of all, let's change our texture corner from UV to object, which will create a nice gradient going halfway, but it's going in the wrong direction. So let's rotate it. So in the mapping node, let's type 90 for the Y value over there. Now it's going up exactly how we want it to, but I want to move it down a little bit. So I'm going to take the X and set it to 0.3, which will pull it down slightly. And finally, I'm going to take the Z skill and scale this down until we get something that I want. So I think I'm going to go for 0.6 in this case, maybe set this to 0.4. Uh, let's see how that looks if we now preview the actual material. So control shift click on the mix shader and there is our glass shader. Now I think it might still be a bit too much. So actually let's set this to 0.8, maybe set this to 0.5. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Now I'm going to change the black color though. So instead of black, I'm going to use this mid gray and then take it into the brown reddish color. So we get a nice smoky brown colored glass look. Now you won't be able to tell right now because we need a light. So let's go ahead and add in a light next. So back into layout here, I'm going to go into side view. So that's numpad three. Shift A, light, area light. And I'm going to pull this guy up all the way to the right and up top and shine it towards the glass by clicking and dragging the yellow ball over here and pointing it towards our glass object. Might pull it in a little bit closer, set it to something like this, and you should be good to go. Now we are going to need a strong value for this to work. So I'm going to go 20,000 watts on the power, first of all. Now let's go back into render view and you will see we now have some light. However, it's not looking very good just yet. And that's because their light is not bouncing from anything and it's mostly just passing through the glass. So we need other objects to actually enhance how the glass looks. And we also need this for the glass reflections, which will make it look way more natural. So in my case, I'm just going to enable these two base meshes that I have. But in your case, you might just want to add in a plane, scale it up, et voila, you should be good to go. Again, in my case, I'm going to use these two base meshes. So we now have the glass over here. With the glass in the right position, we now need to create caustics. First of all, you might have noticed that our light over here, which I'm just going to make slightly warmer, uh, had this option called shadow caustics. Now this is what we are going to use shadow caustics. So they're not true caustics. They don't reflect all of the lights and all of the direction like an actual glass in real life would, but it will just create caustics in the shadow that the object creates still a major upgrade though. So shadow caustics, let's enable it and what? Okay. So nothing happened. Why is that? I enabled shadow caustic, right? So why is nothing happening? Well, you need to enable a few more things for it to work. Next, let's select our glass here. Let's go into the object properties, which are over here into shading. Let's scroll down and we need to make sure that this is actually costing shadow caustics. So let's select it. And again, nothing's happening. What's going on? Well, there's this other option as well called receive shadow caustics and you have guessed it. Yep, you're right. You need to actually select an object a plane or a cube, whatever you want the caustics to receive and just select it and enable receive caustics. And there you go. 
now we are getting some amazing caustic stuff. So I might want to change the location of the light a little bit. So I'm just going to pull this guy back slightly, point it maybe like so. See how that looks. Yeah, point it down. Yeah, okay, this is dope. Okay, so now you can see we are actually getting some of these ridges which are in here. Um, we are now getting shadow caustics for our object and that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So this is how you enable shadow caustics in your scenes. You need to, first of all, enable it in the light. Second of all, you need to enable cost shadow caustics for the objects which you want to cost the caustics for. And third of all, you need to have a receiver for the caustics. So in this case, I'm using this marble block. Um, but you could use other objects as well. Let's create some water next. And over here, I have this overall plane to cover our entire scene. Now, over here in the shading option for the object properties, I'm just going to enable receive because I want this to receive the caustics that I'm going to create in just a bit. All right, so next up, what we want to do is create the water. So I'm just going to add in another plane, scale it up a bunch and just pull it down. So Gene said, apply scale with control A. Voila, we now have a plane which we can use to actually create our water. Now let's just add in a shader for this guy and go back into shading here. Now, if we go into render view, let's create our water shader. And in this case, I'm not going to use a glass BSTF, but I'm going to show you how to do this using the principled BSTF. So I'm going to take the color and set it to a very, very, very low light bluish color or something like this. And then crank up the transmission to be one. Set the roughness to zero. I mean, that's it. We have water, right? Nope. One last step. You need to check the IOR for water. In this case, the IOR is 1.3340 degree or 20 degree water. So let's just set it to that and you now have a nice water shader. You might be thinking, okay, but it still looks horrible. Yep. Okay. Let's enable caustics and let's see how it looks then. Cost shadow caustics looking pretty poor. And that's because we have no actual geometry for this to cast any caustics from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an ocean. In this case, with the plane still selected, let's go to the modifiers tab, add modifier and choose ocean. We now need to change a few settings. First of all, I'm going to set the resolution to be 20 in each direction. And we should be immediately getting a bunch of caustics going on. Now you might want to scale these up if you want to. In this case, you could just take this skill over here, set it to two, uh, whatever works for you. Um, I think like 1.5 is pretty, pretty dope. And I mean, that's it. We already have amazing water caustics. I mean, look at that. Look at all these edges over here. And if we look under the plane as well, if we check on the, the ground plane there, we have amazing water caustics. And using the ocean uh, modifier, we could actually bake it out. So it's actually an animated ocean or water shader. But for now, uh, that's out of the scope for this tutorial. So that's how you enable shadow caustics in Blender 3.2. Again, if I were to delete the overall glass material and just add in a new one, set the color to, you know, like a bright blue, you will see we have these amazing blue caustics or green caustics, whatever you want. You can do so much stuff with this. It's a real new game changer for Blender. I like the material that I just created with you guys. So I'm just re-enabling this. Might change the color to be a bit more saturated, something like that. Maybe make it slightly lighter. It's all up to your taste. So a slightly lighter color and a nice, you know, brown orangey tint, uh, and we will get all of this niceness going on. All right. So that wraps up on how to get caustics in Blender 3.2. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. And if you did, then please leave a like and subscribe. I want to point out that the project files for this video are available on my Patreon, so please consider becoming a patron. It gets you access to over 40 project files, so a lot of value right there. I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Once again, a huge shout out to all my patrons who make these videos possible. Thanks for the support.